but since I am a preacher, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to look at your neighbor and say it's just plain old good to be here. It's just plain old good to be here. Uh, Y'all, let's put your hands together for all these young men. Let's go ahead. Let's give it up for all the mentors. Let's give it up for all the grandmama nims. And lastly, but definitely not least, let's give it up for Delta Sigma Faith. Hey, man, I, I was sharing uh, with the speaker uh, Brother Derek, we were sitting there talking, and uh, it would be nice if some of the uh, men organizations had a program of this caliber. Yes. Yes. But behind every great man, there is a great woman. <laughs> Amen. And these women, several years ago, had a vision part of their national organization wanted to do something for young black men in title and body. And for the last couple of years, they have done a good job sowing seeds. And Jalen and Andre are just two examples of the harvest that this program is reaping. Is that all right? Yeah. And I, I'm excited. And we were just sitting here yeah. tripping at if these young men realize the opportunity that is before them. I know somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And since I am an engineer, we are big on numbers. And they, they encourage y'all to take math classes, not basket weaving, but <laughs> math. And, and let's just say Chuckles and Grand Channel. Yeah. Let's just say there are 5,000 young black men in Dover. Mm -hmm. And if there are 20 young men here, so 20 divided by that big number is going to give you about 0.4%. These young men represent 0.4% of the young men in our society. And I want to encourage y'all right now, did not y'all feel good receiving all of those accolades? Didn't you feel Give yourself a hand. Come on. Did you feel good? It feels good to get rewarded. Come on, somebody. It's good to get pat on the back and somebody to tell you you've done a good job. Come on, somebody. Because one of these old days, we want to hear Jesus say, well done. Well, let me say that for tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> but there, there's just something, and, and we, we've been here, and, and we've had a good time, and I don't want to hold you long, but I couldn't wait to get up. Uh, unlike Derek, I love to talk. <laughs> Derek, I don't want to talk about all these people. I'm so nervous. I love to talk. Amen. I love to talk. But there's just something that's really been in my spirit lately, and I've been, I've been teaching, I've been doing seminars, and y'all know I'm on Facebook and all this social media. I've been sharing with everybody I can. I want you to remember this, because I like just saying things that are getting your spirit and stay with you. Because I want y'all to know you're different. And back to that 0.4% that you represent, you are special. Amen. Don't look at it as you represent a segment of society that's at risk. Don't look at it like that. You are special because you are handpicked. Come, come on, somebody. You are handpicked to be here. Hey, help on somebody. And I don't care what anybody says. We have some friends in college that talk about, I'm black. I don't want to be a, a token. The devil is a lie. Use my blackness. Come on, somebody. Hello? Yeah, I heard one last time. Oh, I don't want to be no token black. The devil is a lie. Use my blackness. Come on, somebody. Hello? And then when you are a black female, that is a double whatever they call it. Say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hello? But there's something I want to leave with you for just a few moments. Y'all are special. You're different. You're not like everybody else. But I want to leave something with you. To soar with eagles, you can't hang with chicken. All right, now. To soar, repeat after me, to soar with eagles, I can't hang with chicken. I can't hang with chicken. The other night, Thursday night, I host an internet radio show. And the other night, this is my birth month, so my theme in June is to celebrate my birth month. So I, I went out and looking for some people that I want to host that I like that's following me on this other social media site. And I reached out to Sugar Ray Leonard Jr. And I sent him a message and said, Sugar Ray, I would love for you to be a guest on my radio show Thursday night. He sends me a message back and said, I would love to, Dr. Sam. 
I was like, yay. <laughs> I was so hyped. And, and Thursday night, we, we were on the internet together. And, and before the show, Shannon, he, he sent, put out a, a picture on Facebook of him and his dad when he was about seven years old. And that brought back so many memories. But I remember, I'll be 45 Monday, I remember when that ad came out. And I, and I said, Ray, you and your dad look so happy in that picture. It wasn't Photoshop. They genuinely looked happy. And I said, what was it like growing up in your house, being the son of Sugar Ray Leonard? And he said, it was, it was, it was normal. Um, we had some things we went through, but it was just normal. He said, what was made my situation so special, my daddy was 16 when he had me. So we grew up together. My grandparents stayed together. My mom and daddy stayed together. And we just loved each other. And I said, well, Ray, give me about three things that, that you use to really keep you motivated and to grow up in that type of lifestyle. There were three things, and I want to leave them with you. There were three things that he shared, and I got three things I'm going to leave with you, and I'm gone. One thing that he said, number one, right off the bat, he said, you got to love God. Mm -hmm. And young men, mm -hmm. young graduates, mm -hmm. Jalen, Andre, and there's anybody else here that I may not may have missed, number one, foremost, you have to show up, love God. Yes. Yes. Can I get a witness somewhere? Yes. I don't care where you go, and especially since you're going to be playing football and you're going to be in the computer field. It, it's a competitive world out there. Yes. Those men up there in the NFL fight right now. Billionaires fighting with millionaires. Come on, somebody. <laughs> there are 1,500 young men that make it to the NFL. Hopefully, you just stood up here and practiced your Heisman award-winning speech. Oh, <laughs> Hello, somebody. You may be at Alabama State. You may be at a big college, but if you do what you got to do, you can make it where you're trying to go. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. I don't care where you are. With God, and I, I talked to a friend the other day in California, we said, me plus God is a majority. Right. You don't need a whole lot of anybody. You need to write somebody. His name is Jesus. Let me hear somebody say, I love the Lord. Oh. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you do. And every preacher in here test, every Christian in here test, if you got God on that one side, yes. all that. If, if you got God, you, you may not. Hey, 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 you're going to be around some folks in college that, that are magnum cum laude. Brother Leonard back there, that's the maintenance manager, he graduated magnum cum laude. A right. uh, 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 brother Falk back there graduated summa cum laude. A uh, uh, Shannon over here, she graduated cum laude. I just graduated, thank you, Lord. <laughs> up to the wee hours of the morning and when I sat in front of that test, it looked like it was in tongues and God had to interpret. I said, Lord, bring back to my remembrance what I studied and I graduated with a 3.0 at it. Hello, somebody. So with God, and a lot of people think when they get to college, they can forget, forget about God, the devil is alive. And you better show them up, hold on to them because money get tight. And with God on my side, I graduated on the own $600. Ooh. Oh, tell me God ain't good. My daddy said a minute night, God know how to stretch dollars, amen? amen? Not only, number one, love God, number two, remain humble. You, you, you didn't get here by yourself. You, you can't make it by yourself. Everybody needs somebody. These women in this program, one of the things they have taught you, you got to lean on somebody. Of course, they could not pay us mentor, but us just paying forward, we're spending time with you young men. Amen. That, let that be a lesson to you. And Jalen said in his speech, maybe one day I'll come back and be a mentor. Amen. Come on, somebody. Right. Let me hear y'all say, remain humble. Remain humble. One thing a woman hates. Now, 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 I got to tell you, that there, there's a thin line. Women don't like arrogant men. Oh, but the sexiest thing in the world to a black woman is a man that walks with confidence. Amen. You know how our president walking these young men, you saw how they get strutted up here? We got what we call sweat. Right. <laughs> hey, I want every young man stand up real quick. Every young man stand up and just, 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 yeah, just fix yourself. And look at every woman in here, just wave your hand. Come on. Just wave your hand. Y'all say it like you mean to say, I am somebody. Y'all have a 
seat, have a seat. You got to rap. Now you can't be arrogant. You got to walk with confidence. You got to walk in confidence yet humbly before God. And God will use you. Don't ever think. The quickest way that you will lose your anointing if you ever think you can make it by yourself. Never get too, never get too sure of yourself that you can't ask somebody to help you. I'd be 45 Monday, and the biggest thing I've learned to get some help. But there's somebody else that's got what you need. And all you got to do is ask for a little bit of help. Thirdly, the last thing he shared with us on the radio program, he said, remain faithful. Remain faithful to God and remain faithful to your calling. The biggest thing that got Samson in trouble was that his commitment didn't match his calling. You may be an athlete, but you sure still got to go to practice. You got to eat right. You got to exercise. To, to be a good academic student, you got to study. The biggest shock for me between high school and college, I didn't have to study hard in high school, but when I got to college, oh, <laughs> Jesus. And guess what? Those professors are not going to send you a text message and say, Jalen, it's time to come to class. <laughs> they don't care. You can take that same class four years. They don't care. And am I right? So who, who, do you, who do you text and ask them to come to class? Nobody. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> they ain't giving out a tennis award in college. <laughs> Hello? Hello? So you got to remain faithful. To be anything, you got to remain faithful. A lot of times, these young men that aspire to be rappers, do you not know rappers are some of the smartest people on the face of the earth? They study. Hello? How in the world are you going to rap about something and get all you can say is, yeah. <laughs> Put on academic probation. 
Because with a couple of quarters, I, I, I parted a little too hard. <laughs> and I didn't realize you got to study. You can't party all the time. A little bit every night and then it's all right, but not every night. Sam, you, you ready to go? Yeah, where we going? <laughs> and then I get a letter that said we're going to put you on academic probation. So we ain't telling you something we ain't been through our sale. Right. I got right after that. Praise God. But never give up. You there's gonna be some classes gonna be hard. Yeah. There's gonna be some quarters you don't know where the money coming from. But never give up. Yeah. I remember when Jordan before uh, he won a few championships and Shaq came on the scene and, and Shaq retired the other day. They were interviewing him and one of the one of the things he said about playing with Michael Jordan, Mike hugged him one day after after the Bulls put it on pretty good. <laughs> Mike hugged him and said, Shaq, before you succeed, you got to learn how to fail. You got to understand that every time you want to do something, some obstacles and some challenges are going to be in front of you. Even in this simple program, you have some challenges. Hello? It was a challenge to show up at some of these events that you thought were boring. <laughs> well, when are we going to the mall to look at girls? <laughs> I want to see some little men. I want to see some shorties. Well, let me tell y'all a secret, fella. Shorties today, they ain't balling with brothers that ain't got no sense and they ain't got no money. Amen. Hey, amen, guys. Amen, guys. If you ain't a baller and a shot caller, these girls ain't got time for you to get battling themselves. And my wife right there was Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So while you looking at Charlotte, you better have something in your pocket. Come on, somebody. But let me hear y'all say, never give up. Never give up. As I close, there was this baby eagle that through chains ended up in a chicken coop. Mm -hmm. okay. This mother chicken sat on these biddies and it just so happened that this little eaglet landed mm -hmm. in this chicken coop. Mm -hmm. All right now. And the mother, being a good mother, did not want to discard this unusual looking biddy. <laughs> so she fed him like she fed her other babies. And that little eagle at Shannon didn't know any difference, so he thought he was a chick. <laughs> but as time progressed and as they grew, this eaglet realized that he was different. Mm -hmm. The other little chick and his other little brothers and sisters would laugh at him every day. You don't look like us. <laughs> and the little eagle went to the mama one day and said, Mama, why I look so different? The mama said, baby, I don't know why you look like that, but mama love you anyway, and you just got the beauty. Your little white beak you got, it just so pretty, it just stands out. And that little eagle stuck his little chest out. Mama, you think I look good? And that mama said, yes, you look good, baby. And they grew up, and, and the eagle would just spread his wings every day, and the other little chicken would just laugh at it. But one day, as it would happen, uh, a couple of eagles flew by. And all of a sudden, Something came over this eagle and he spread his wings and he took off running and, and all of a sudden the wind got up on his wings and he took off and he looked back over his shoulder at his brothers and his sisters and he looked back at him and said, I bet y'all can't do that. <laughs> so I want to leave you with this while other folks might laugh at who you are. I got a friend that works at Mary Kay, and, and she said, if folks ain't laughing at your dream, they ain't big enough. Thank you. I want you to go home tonight. I want you to look in the mirror, and I want you to tell yourself, I can leave, I can fly. All right.